In this video, we check out my vintage Commodore VIC switch by Handic Software AB out of Stockholm, Sweden. The VIC switch is hardware for use with the Commodore 64, VIC-20, and Commodore 128 computers. Without any further ado, let's jump right into this video and check out the VIC switch. I've been after a Commodore VIC switch for as long as I can remember. On July 7th, 2022, I was able to finally secure one in a trade from Mike over at Ravenwolf Retrotech, a fellow Commodore computer collector. He's also got a YouTube channel, and I've put a link to his channel in my description. So what is the Commodore VIC switch, you might be asking? It's a device that makes it possible to share serial devices with up to eight Commodore computers, which means eight computers can share a single disk drive, printer, plotter, etc. So how does that even work? Basically, the VIC switch keeps track of who is currently using the device and prevents access to all other computers who might be requesting it at the same time. Once the first computer is done using it, the VIC switch will then give access to the next computer. Pretty cool. These were used in schools back in the early 1980s, and it's not very common to find one in 2022. Do I dare say this piece of hardware is rare? Well, if you think this is rare, there's a pet version of this as well that has the IEEE interface. So you've probably seen pictures or videos on the internet that show Commodore pets in classrooms, you know, rows of, you know, four to eight or maybe 16 machines and only a couple of disk drives or printers. Well, they were able to do that with the VIC switch. Something that's really cool about the VIC switch is you can do a mix and match of machines. You can hook up a couple of Commodore 64s, a couple of VIC-20s, and even Commodore 128s, since they all share the same IEC bus. Well, here is the front of the VIC switch, which you've been looking at for the first part of this video, but I'm gonna point out a few things. Here is the label. You see the Commodore Chicken Lips logo, Handic Software AB logo, Commodore VIC switch made in Sweden, We've got this label here with some lights. We got power and then devices one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And when this is plugged in, the power light is always on. And if a computer is plugged into port one and it's accessing stuff, this light would be lit up. And if it was, you know, number four, it'd be lit up and then one would be off, etc. So it's pretty cool. We got some blinking lights. Everyone likes blinking lights. So now without even doing a uh, an edit. We're just gonna turn it on the side and show you the side here really quick. Got a couple of screws here and here. The other side is exactly the same. So I'm not gonna show you that, but let's turn it around so you can see the back. Here is the back of the unit. We're gonna go from right to left. Here is the power. You see power, and this is just a standard power cable, and I've got that right here. Show you that's just a little standard, you know, 110 power cord. And then we've got, you know, uh, the ports, the IEC ports 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. These are what they call inputs. That's why it says in right here. And then we have out. So you would plug a Commodore 64 or whatever Commodore IEC computer into a port. And then from here, you would go out to your disk drive, printer plotter, etc. And you can daisy chain those. You know, you could do that back in the day. You'd have your Commodore 64, plug in your disk drive, and then from the disk drive, daisy chain out to your printer, your plotter, or what other IEC device you had. Something to note about the back of this is this label here. This is an original label but from where it starts out all the way to around the end, this was coming off. And I used some of my tacky glue, and you've seen that in previous videos. Put a little bit on the back, re-secured that down, and it's uh, as good as new. It's a little discolored, but it's old. It's from the 80s, and uh, you know, what can you do? I'm gonna turn it back around here and show you the front again. 
something to show you on the front on this label here there's an air bubble right here I don't know if it's showing up in the camera let's turn it up a little bit on an angle maybe you can see it so what I'm thinking is using my heat gun or a hair dryer and uh, warming up the glue and getting that to come off and then re-securing re it down and getting that air bubble but I'm not 100% sure if I should do that so if you think I should do that or not do it let me know down in the comments all right, next up, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and show you the inside. I almost forgot to show one other thing before we crack this open and show you the inside. I wanna show you the bottom of the unit and let's adjust the camera here a little bit. You can see we got four rubber feet and they have slid a little bit. You can see the black there on some of these and that's just from age and the glue coming loose and drying etc so at some point i'm going to pull those off and i'm going to reline them up re-glue them down so they're they're all proper because that's my ocd wanting everything to be as nice as possible all right let me grab the flathead screwdriver and we're going to crack this open and show you the electronics inside to see how this thing works all right, I've got the four screws undone and I'm about to lift the top off of the Commodore VIC switch. In three, two, one, lift off. It has been lifted off. Show you the, the lid, it's just a metal, metal lid. It's kind of textured, almost looks kind of like a project box. Um, that's probably what they used back in the day. So there it is with the top off and you can see the power. You can see the IEC ports here. And let's, uh, let's go ahead and tilt this up a little bit here. There is the inside. Let me bring this closer to the camera here. Let's see here. How does that look? Can you see that? You can't answer me. But there we go. Let's try to get it and not get too much glare. But we've got a couple of capacitors, a fuse, uh, some resistors. Looks like a pretty simple design. Uh, this right here, I'm not totally sure what this is. Uh, if you know, let me know in the comments. But yeah, down here on the bottom, you got the company logo. 1022 not quite sure what that means but yeah that's the uh that's the inside the components and here is like a side view this way and a side view this way and of course the back and you know what i think i can show you that label that air bubble there you go see that bubble right there this bubble i was talking about what do you think should i take this off and try to make it look good or just leave it you know leave it how it is you know the patina all the history but yeah all right well, let me get the lid back on and we'll uh, talk a little bit more about some of the history of this so there you go you've seen the outside and the inside of the commodore vic switch and i told you a little bit of how it works I'm planning on doing a follow-up video with a few of my Commodore computer user friends so we can have four to eight Commodore computers connected up and give this thing a real world test in present day. Basically, having eight Commodore computers, eight monitors, a disk drive, printer, a plotter would take up a lot of table space. And I'm just not set up for that at my, my place. So the video will probably need to have multiple cameras to catch all of the action and we'll have to find a place where we can set up a couple of maybe eight foot tables or something and get it done. But that will be a follow-up video. At this time, I'd like to give a quick shout out to my patrons. These are the folks that support me on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash geek with social skills. I'd also like to have you uh, check out the links in my description, including my friends of the channel and also Mike from Ravenwolf Retro Tech and his YouTube channel. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you watching my video on what I feel is a rare piece of Commodore hardware, the Commodore VIC switch 
by Handic Software AB out of, what is it, Sweden? Stockholm, Sweden? Yeah. So thank you again for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next video.